Spirit of Life is proudly sponsored by Mattress Oz. Mattressesarus.com.au Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Christopher Yuan. He will share his story of his conversion. Hi, Christopher. Welcome to our show. Thanks, Geraldine. Yes, I read your book, and mm. you were you're a former gay man, mm -hmm. and, um, and you were in prison for some time, and mm. yeah, you have a terrific story. Mm. Yes, I'd love to hear more about your story. Sure. Um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home from America. Mm. Uh, my parents were born in China, then they went to the U.S. for graduate school. Um, and even though I wasn't Christian, my parents raised me traditional Chinese values, very conservative values, strong mm. family emphasis. Um, but I had this struggle from a young age. I, I knew I had these attractions to the same sex. When, uh, when I was about nine years old, I came across pornography at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. um, and this wasn't one of my friends, it was actually a family, a trusted family friend. Um, came across pornography and it was, um, actually it wasn't gay pornography, it was uh, you know heterosexual pornography, mostly women. There were some pictures with men and. Those really, that was the first time that I realized that I had those, those feelings, but I didn't tell anyone, kept my feelings hidden mm -hmm. through high school, college, even the Marine Corps Reserves. In my early 20s then, that's um, when I finally came out of the closet uh, and I um, w was moved from Chicago mm -hmm. where I was, where I'm from, and that's, that's home, moved from Chicago to Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, where I started dental school. I was pursuing my doctorate in dentistry. Oh, and your parent, you kept it from your parents still, or you, or well, you so at that, So after that kind of one year of, of coming out, I broke the news to my parents, and I told my parents, I am gay. Well, for my mom, she wasn't Christian, but she gave me an ultimatum, you know, kind of wow. your typical Asian mom, and <laughs> she said, uh, you must either choose the family or choose that she couldn't even say the word. Oh, wow. So, um, I, for me, I, I thought, well, this isn't a choice. I can't turn it on and off like a light switch. So, I, I said, if you can't accept me, then I have no other choice but to leave. So, I went home, left and I went back to Louisville, Kentucky. Devastated my mom. She wasn't a Christian, remember? Mm -hmm. um, and she, uh, you know, she and my dad, their marriage was really a wreck. It was a disaster, even though strong emphasis on the family, but um, they had been pursuing the American dream for so long, and they, I think they really achieved it. My father um, was a successful dentist, and we lived uh, well, mm. but my, our, our family life was really, n none of us were happy. We, my parents argued a lot, uh, and so, after years of living as non-Christians, my parents' marriage was a disaster. They actually began the paperwork oh, for divorce. Wow. And you, you're, and when you started entering the gay lifestyle, mm -hmm. what, um, you, did you um, go into a relationship? Did you have a permanent relationship? Yeah, so, um, you know, after, uh, you know, I, I came out to my parents, I was kind of in and out of relationships. Um, I, you know, I, I, per, I was pursuing that, you know, that one, uh, that perfect partner, um, and and I had uh, you know one one partner for uh, about two years, um, but then we split up, and um, but interestingly enough, um, kind of you know my parents when I came out to my mom, that was actually the crisis that brought my mother to faith. She um, through kind of all the. Um, uh, 
you know, the crisis, you know, with my parents' divorce and are about to get a divorce. My, uh, my coming out, my older brother was sort of living a rebellious life. My mom really had kind of just given up on life and she was gonna end her life. Wow. Um, but fortunately, God saved her through a little pamphlet on homosexuality. And um, she began reading this pamphlet, shared with her pl the plan of salvation, that all of us are sinners, and yet in spite of our sin, the God of the universe still loves us. And that was something that my mother had never heard before. So God opened up the eyes of her heart to see that just as God can love her in spite of her sin, she could love me, her gay son. You know, so interesting, a lot of times people say, oh, Christians, they, they hate gays or Christian parents reject their children, but I experienced the opposite. Before my mother became a Christian, she rejected me. But once I became a Christian, my mother loved me and she can, tried to continue to reach out and she realized that she had made a mistake. So I, I was kind of going the opposite direction. You know, I was pursuing these relationships. Um, I, I had had this relationship for about two years, split up, and after that split up, I was I was really broken, and um, I decided to start experimenting with drugs. I was I was pretty active in the gay community, going out to the gay clubs, mm -hmm. and and not all gays or lesbians do drugs or promiscuous. That's just part of my story. Um, so I. I was doing drugs, going out to the clubs, but you know, as a dental student, I didn't have much money. Yes. So I supported my habit by selling drugs. Um, and did your parents know about your drug habit? They mm. didn't know, they had no idea. They, they didn't know, uh, you know what I was doing, but they knew that I needed to know Jesus Christ. Um, so your dad became a Christian too? Yes, so actually, uh, after my mother became a Christian, my father become, became a Christian, just within a few months, just uh, oh. about, th about three months. My, my mother, um, she always says she had planned to end her life, in reality, she did. One of her favorite verses is Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So um, my mother became a Christian, my father became a Christian, I just kept going the opposite direction. So I started selling drugs, my parents had no clue that I was, that I was doing drugs. I uh, eventually, after some time, um, the dental school expelled me. I was actually only three months away from receiving my doctorate in the, in the mm. school, kicked me out. So my parents, um, they moved from uh, Chicago to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, mm. or I, 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 they, they went to um, to Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, they were gonna actually fight. I thought they were gonna fight to keep me in school, but they, they didn't. And then the, my mother told the dean, it's not important um, that Christopher becomes mm. a dentist, but what's more important is that Christopher becomes a Christ follower. Yes, that's, a, yes, that's, a, that's the main thing that a lot of peop parents want, isn't it? That their child comes to the faith. Um, that's really interesting. We need to go for a break now. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Christopher Yuan. He's been sharing his story of faith and also how his parents came to the Lord while he was going the other way. Hello, Christopher. Um, welcome back. And I would like to know more about what happened after you were expelled from, was it dentist school? Was right, that? yeah. So <clears throat> I was expelled and I thought, well, why stay here? And Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky is kind of in the middle of nowhere and it's, you know, small little city. So I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, much bigger city. And um, I just kept doing what I knew how to best at that time and that was selling drugs. So um, I actually became, went from being a drug dealer to being a supplier. Um, and I began wow. supplying drugs to dealers in over a dozen states in the U.S. Um, I, you know, I was really living it up. I you know, thought I was having fun, and um, you know, I, I, f I felt like I could, uh, you know, conquer the world. I, I, I really felt I had it all. I had money, fame, drugs, and sex. But the reality was I had exchanged the truth of God 
and I began worshiping and serving the creature rather than the creator because in my world, I really had become God. And you, were you in a relationship or you were having different partners? You know, I, <clears throat> again, I, I was pursuing you know, a relationship and, and I was wanting, I was looking for happiness and I um, had been in a relationship. I mean, in, my longest one at that time was about, uh, you know, a year. And uh, I mean, I guess I was only in Atlanta for uh, two years at that, I'm sorry, uh, three, you know, two, three years. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, ended up after some time, you know, when, you, w when you're doing drugs, you just do things that you wouldn't normally do. So I was in and out of relationships, if you would even call that, but I was living b very promiscuously and, um, and uh, kind of has the depths of where I had gone. I, I had multiple partners and um, just uh, was getting sucked in, not just to the, the sexual addictions, but also with the drugs as well. Mm. And how long did that go for and what happened after? Right, see it was, um, it was about two, three years um, mm -hmm. while I was in Atlanta. I mean, before that, I was also in uh, Louisville, but uh, two, three years in Atlanta. And, um, you know, this whole time uh, you had asked, did my parents know? Even while I was in Atlanta, my parents didn't know. I, and the, the reality is my, you know, my parents being typical Asian, they're not, they're kind of sheltered when it comes to the, the drug scene. So even if I was doing drugs or getting high, they probably wouldn't even recognize it, but they didn't mm. know that I was doing drugs, especially they didn't know mm. that I was selling drugs. But they knew my biggest need was to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So my parents tried to reach out to me for the love of Christ. I kept pushing them away. Um, my mother would send me Christian cards. I would just throw them away. My, uh, my parents actually came to visit me one time in Atlanta. And um, after the second day, I, I really had enough. And, and they weren't even preaching at me. They weren't telling me what to do, what not to do. But just the fact that God had so transformed their lives that they radiated Christ, that in itself was offensive to me. And I told them to get out. Mm. But my dad, he wanted to give me something in his very first Bible. He was, you know, all dog-eared. And I told my dad, I don't want your Bible because I, I didn't want him to think that I actually might read it. But he left it on my kitchen counter anyway and walked out the door. So um, as soon as my parents left, I took my dad's Bible and I threw it in the trash can. Mm. I didn't want anything to do with God, to do with their newfound religion, and certainly nothing to do with the Bible. Yeah. And, and after that visit, um, it was so obvious to my parents, so obvious to my parents that I was totally hopeless, mm. totally hopeless, uh, completely unreachable. And you ended up in prison, didn't you? Right. So um, uh, my parents prayed for a miracle. And uh, that miracle came with a bang on my door. And I opened up my door one day and on my front doorstep were 12 federal drug enforcement agents, Atlanta police, and two big German shepherd dogs. I just received a large shipment of drugs. Um, it, it wasn't my largest, but they uh, had confiscated uh, all my money and my drugs, and I was charged with the street value equivalent of 9.1 tons of marijuana. So um, I found myself in jail, and uh, I tried calling home. You know, we all get a phone call that you can make. So I, tr I called home and <clears throat> I didn't want to make that phone call. I mean, I don't, I don't know anyone that really wants to call home from, from jail. And I expected an earful from my mom. But my mother's first words were, son, are you okay? No condemnation, no berating words, just words of unconditional love and grace. Um, I'm reminded of when Paul says in Romans chapter two, verse four, that says that it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. You know, often we think that, oh, we have to bring people, you know, the truth, and that's what's going to pe bring people to repentance, or we, you know, point people out their sin, and that's gonna, well, the Word of God says it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. And even on that miserable day, 
God uh, poured out His grace and drew him to myself through the words of my mom. Wow, so you re it really touched your heart and it really hit home to yeah. you. I would say that, would be, that was kind of the mm. beginning. Yeah. Yeah, the beginning of that journey. Yeah, and it took you a while to, because um, you pushed them a lot, even while you were in prison, you pushed them away at different times. And you I did, and, and yet they were the ones that were there for me. All the my time. My friends were gone, and but my, my parents were there. Yes. Just on that note, we might go for a break now. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, and our guest is Christopher Yuan. He shares his story of conversion while he was in prison. Hello, Christopher. It was, um, yeah, could you tell me more about the conversion that happened? So you, you felt your mum's love and God's love yes. through your mum. Right. So I found myself in jail, and it was around three days later, I walking around the cell block, and I passed by this garbage can. Um, and I thought, my life at this point was like this heap of trash, heap of rubbish. And I was about to pass by it, but something on top of the trash caught my eye. Uh, I bent over, picked it up, and it was a Gideon's New Testament. Took it back to my cell, I began reading it. And, you know, at first I didn't think, you know, this is the Word of God, this is something that's going to change my life, but I thought, I've got nothing else to do, and so I began reading it. But as we know, uh, and as uh, many of the watchers know what we have in our Bibles is not just ink on paper, but it's the very breath of God. And it began to convict me and challenge me. Um, well, it wasn't, you know, good to be convicted of my sin, and I thought things couldn't get any worse. A couple days, a couple weeks later, I was called into the nurse's office, and she sat me down. I was I was handcuffed. And I, I knew something wasn't right. So she wrote something on a piece of paper, sl slowly slid it across the desk to me, and on it she had written three letters and a symbol. And it read HIV positive. The days after that were dark, lonely. Um, you know, that was the darkest moment in my life. So I was laying in my bed one night, and I looked up at the metal bunk above me, and someone had scribbled something, and it read, If you're bored, read Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That was the hopeless point in my life, and yet God was using the words written by a prophet thousands of years ago to a rebellious nation, Israel, to tell me that regardless of who I was and what I had done in the past, He still had a plan for me. I didn't know where this plan was going to take me, but God gave me enough faith and strength to get through that one day and the next and the next. My conversion, my transformation was, uh, was gradual over time. And God was challenging me and convicting me of my dependencies. Obvious drugs, but within a few months, God delivered me from that addiction. But the last thing that I was holding on to was my sexuality. So I was reading the Bible, and it was so clear to me God loved me. But also I came across those passages in the Bible that seemed to condemn that core part of who I thought I was, my sexuality. So I went to a chaplain, and I asked him his opinion on this issue. And I was so surprised that he told me the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality and gave me a book. So I had that book, I, I, and I took that book with much curiosity. I mean, I, I was wanting to find justification for homosexuality. I had that book in one in hand, and the Bible in the other. And from a purely human perspective, a human perspective, I had every reason in the world to accept what that book is claiming, to justify the way I had been living. But I know that it was God's indwelling Holy Spirit that convicted me that those assertions were a clear distortion of God and His Word. And I couldn't even finish that book, and so I gave it back to the chaplain. So that meant I would turn to the Bible alone. 
and I went through every verse, every page. I mean, I was looking for any justification, any type of positive affirmation for a monogamous gay relationship. I couldn't find anything. So I was at a turning point. I had to make a decision, either abandon God and His Word and live as a gay man and pursue a monogamous, loving gay relationship by allowing my sexuality to dictate who I was, or abandon pursuing a gay relationship by liberating myself, freeing myself from my sexuality and live as a follower of Jesus Christ. My decision was clear and obvious. I chose God. So after the days and weeks and months of abstinence passed, I realized that my sexuality shouldn't be the core of who I was. See, I told myself before, God loves me, but he doesn't want me to change, but realized now that unconditional love isn't the same thing as unconditional approval of my behavior. See, my identity shouldn't be found only in my sexuality. Actually, my identity isn't gay, homosexual, or even heterosexual for that matter, but my identity as a child of God has to be in Jesus Christ alone. Mm, that's powerful. The, yeah. the one verse um, that, that really challenged me especially was when God says, Be holy, for I am holy. And I noticed God didn't say, Be heterosexual, for I am heterosexual, but He said, Be holy, for I am holy. So the opposite of homosexuality isn't heterosexuality, but the opposite of homosexuality is holiness. So God was telling me, don't focus upon what you feel or your attractions or your desires, but focus upon living a life of holiness and living a life of purity. Yeah, that sounds like true freedom. Amen. Because you have that joy when you said that. Yes, yes. Yes. So then I got out of prison and God called me to ministry of all things. And I applied to a school in Chicago called Moody Bible Institute and uh, began going to that school and graduated uh, in 2005, went on to my master's, and I just received my doctorate of ministry this year. And I actually travel around the, the, the U.S. and the world talking about God's grace and truth with my parents as well. Wow, it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's amazing. Because uh, so many people, you know, talk about gay life as, as like there's no choice. They're a victim. They, mm. There's a gay gene. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and the reality is, you know, we all are sinners. And yet God has given us the, the ability to, in the midst of our temptations, to still pursue Christ. Yeah, that, that's a wonderful testimony and uh, very inspirational. It gives hope to a lot of people. Um, yes, and uh, and you you also have written a book about yes, your story. Yes, I have <laughs> written a book with my mother, actually called "Out of a Far oh. Country: A Gay Son's Journey to God, A Broken Mother's Search for Hope." Oh, that's wonderful, and um, you know it it will really help a lot of people. Um, yes, and but we've been really happy to have you, and oh, we'll we'd to like here. to have you back. Great. Um, and wish you a good week till we see you next week. Thank you, Geraldine. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye and God bless you. Spirit of Life was proudly sponsored by Mattress Oz. Mattressesarus.com.au